Welcome to another Visual X Masterclass with Mr. Kanyele. Today I want us to look at the topic that has got the biggest marks in your mathematics paper, which is of course trigonometry. We'll divide this uh, topic into three parts. The first part is a trigonometry that happens within a right angle triangle. Then the next part will be your graphs, your tree graphs. Then the last part will be a trigonometry that happens in a triangle which is not a right angle triangle. We refer to that as a triangle formula, which we call it the sine rule, the cosine rule, and area rule. But let's go back to the, we'll, 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 we'll go to basics, then we'll do a few problems. If you want to master an, uh, trigonometry, it is important that you must know your definitions. Your definitions becomes important. That's one part. Uh, you know, others use soccer tower to explain the definitions. So, ka tower. Remember, this trigonometry happens within a right angle triangle. If you've got a right angle triangle, if your theta is here, this side is opposite, these are the y axis, these are the x axis, and this is the radius, the r. Now, definition says sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, sine is always y over r, opposite of hypotenuse. So sine is y over r. What is cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. It is x over r. And tan is opposite over adjacent. Tan is y over x. All right, these are your definitions which are much more important. Uh, I said sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over uh, adjacent. I want us to move on to another important idea identity uh, which says whenever we say tan theta we can refer to it as sine theta over cos theta of course you can use those definitions to understand sine and cos it is advisable that when you work on trigonometry whenever you say tan change it into sine and cos it is advisable that you work with sine and cosine the next one which is important these are the building blocks it is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. This identity is also very important that you must understand them as well. You, no matter how they confuse this, they can even make sine the subject of the formula. Sine theta will be equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. It's the same thing. Or you make cos squared theta the subject. Cos squared theta will be 1 minus uh, sine squared theta. Right. After this, I want us to go to reduction formula. This is what do we do when we deal with this section called the reduction formula. How do we reduce big angles into small angles? You will use the quadrants. If you have quad means 4, this is 0 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees, and this is back to 360. These are called quadrants in this Cartesian plane. The first quadrant, we can refer to it in two ways. It can call it, you can just call it theta or 90 minus theta, 90 degrees minus theta. This simply means when we go this way, we are adding. When we go that way, we are subtracting. So 90, I'm going back, that's why I'm subtracting there. If I'm going this way from 90 this way, I'll be adding. It's 90 degrees plus theta. That's how we refer to this quadrant. Or 180 degrees minus theta. This one will be 180 degrees plus theta or 270 degrees minus theta when you go back. If I go forward, I will have 270 plus theta or 360 minus theta. This is how we refer to these quadrants. So we will be using this to reduce angles that are bigger than 90 degrees into special angles in particular. Examples, if you take, if you have got sine into 180 degrees plus theta. Ah, where is this quadrant? Remember that in this quadrant, all ratios are positive here. What is positive in this quadrant? It's sine. All students take tan is positive here. Cos is positive. We call this a cast diagram. C-A-S-T. Others will say all stops to Chatsworth. No matter how, how you remember it, it will be fine with you. So all ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine and its reciprocal is positive in the second quadrant. On the tan here, on the cosine here. So when you say 180 plus, which quadrant is that? I always say you start where there are brackets. 
When we say 180 plus, where is that, 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 that quadrant? It is, it, is this, it is this one, 180 plus. How is sign in this quadrant? It is negative because it is only tan that is positive in this quadrant. So to reduce this big angle which is above 180, the answer will then be, questions, which quadrant is this? It is the third quadrant. How is sign on the third quadrant? It is negative. Then this will then be equal to sine, negative sine theta. We've reduced a bigger angle into a, 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 a smaller angle, which is acute in this, in this particular case. If I have sine into 360 minus theta. Ah, which quadrant is 360 minus theta? You go here into your Cartesian plane. 360 minus, where do you find 360 minus? We find it in the, in the, in the fourth quadrant, 360 minus. And how is sine in this quadrant? Sine will be negative. That's why you've got a negative answer there. And uh, sine of uh, theta. What is it that you notice here? When you deal with 180 and 360 degrees, the ratio does not change. But when it comes to 90, 90 degrees and 270, the ratio will change. Let's make examples. If I have uh, cos into 90 degrees plus theta. Ah, which quadrant is this? 90 plus. Oh, it's the second quadrant. How is cos on the second quadrant? Only sign is positive on the second quadrant. So the answer there will be uh, minus because cosine in the second quadrant is negative. Uh, because we've got 90, the ratio will change. Cos 90 plus, it's no longer going to be cos, it's going to be what? It's going to be sine theta. That's, what, that's how you change the quadrants. Uh, why, why are we changing these quadrants? We'll explain that uh, a bit later on. So whenever you deal with 90 and 270, remember that if it was sine, it will change. If it was cos, it will change into sine. If it was sine, it will change it into cos, co, co ratios. They will always change in, 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 the, in, the, in that way. After reduction formula, I want us to go straight to spatial angles. Remember when we reduce, okay, what are special angles? Special angles are those angles that you can find them without using a calculator. Angles like 0 degrees, 0 degrees, uh, 30 degrees, uh, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. These angles are special angles, we can find them without using a calculator. I want us to look at a few problems. I want us to, to see how to do this without using a calculator. Let's start with these ones, the 30, 60 one. Oh, I missed 60 degrees here. Yeah. Don't forget 60 degrees, it's one of the important special angles. Uh, if I have this diagram, I'll use these diagrams to explain this. If I have maybe 30 degrees here yeah, and 60 degrees here, yeah, and this will be 90. The sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 at all times. So if one is 60, definitely the other one is, is 30. It's a trigonometry that happens within a right angle triangle. All right. The idea is to find these dimensions around here. I know that all have, I must have uh, square root 3, 2, and 1. How do I know where these are? This usually assists me. This is 3. So next to this 3, I'll put square root 3. If 30 was here, 30 was here, 60 was there, uh, 90 was here. I'm going to put root 3 in this side. So that's, how, that's, that's what guides me to where do I get my square root of 3. Right, I've got two values now. I've got 1 and 2. Which one is split up between 1 and 2? Of course, that is 2. Then put the, put the bigger number on the hypotenuse, which is the bigger side. So this will be 2, this is 1. So how does this help me? If I'm looking for... for, for, for for sine, for sine 60, for example, for sine 60 degrees, what is the answer? What is the definition of sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If my 60 is here, opposite over hypotenuse, it will be root 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. This is how you go about solving these problems without using a calculator. Well, so when the question says do not use a calculator, you think of special angles. Uh, Let's use cos 60. Cos 60 degrees. What is cosine of 60? Ka, ka, ka. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos of 60, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So it will be adjacent, which is 1 over 
uh, over two. I, I want us to, 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 to talk about things, some, some of the things that are important in this case. Let, let's, let's find uh, uh, sine theta, sine theta degrees. I want us to notice what happens between those two. Sine theta, that is 30 degrees, and the definition for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this will be equals to 1 over 2. Opposite over hypotenuse. I want you to notice this and that. It's the same thing. I want you to notice this too. What is this saying to me? Sine, six, sine 30 degrees is the same as cos of, cosine of uh, 60 degrees. Why? Let's look at this. I know that if I have oh, sine 30, sine 30, Degrees. I want us to show, to show why sine 30 is the same as cosine of 60. It is the same as 1. If I am I'm given sine and I'm required to find cos, what changes sine to cos? The cos function. If I've got 90, cos will change into sine. If I've got 90, sine will change into cos. So the only way for me to get cosine of 60 to show that sine theta is the same as cosine of 6 is to introduce a 90 degrees on my sine so that it will change into cos. So this then will be sine into how can I introduce 90? It will be 90. It's 90 minus what that will give me 60 or 90 plus what that will give me 30. So it's 90 minus 60. This must be exactly the same as this one. Yes, it is the same. 90 minus 60 is 30 degrees. So this will eventually be sine into 90 minus. Ah, 90 minus, which quadrant is 90 minus? It is the first quadrant where all ratios are positive. Now watch. But because we've got 90, the ratio will change into cos of this particular angle of 60. So it is true that cos 60 is the same as sine 30 degrees. In the very same way, uh, sine 20 degrees is the same as cos, you add this two, if you add 30 and 60, you get 90. So cos sine 20 is the same as cos 70. You must know these things. You can even cancel them out or because when you divide them, they will give you one. Sine 45 is the same as cosine 45. As long as when you add these two, you get 90. Those will be the same. The ratios are different. We're dealing with sine and cos. So that, that's about it about special angles. If, if you look at the other diagram that caters for 45. Uh, this is 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. How do I remember these dimensions for the 45? Uh, this usually helps me when I deal with 45. Uh, I say, if I hide this side, what do I see? 45 degrees? Yes. How many 45s do I see? One. So I say, that's how I remember it. If I hide it from this side, do I see 45 degrees? How many do I see? I see one. If I hide it from this side, do I see 45s? Yes. How many do I see? I see two. So that's why I put my square root two. That's how I remember it. You can find your own ways to play around with it. So if we are saying we're looking for sine 45 degrees, this is what you use. Not a calculator. Can either use that 45 or this 45. Remember the definition of sine. It is opposite over hypotenuse. So what is opposite here? It is 1 over hypotenuse. It is root 2. This is how you go about finding uh, this, this without using a calculator. Others, of course, will want you to rationalize the denominator. If you want. This is the same as if, if I multiply this by root 2 over root 2. This is the same as this times that. It is root 2 over 2. So this is exactly the same as this. So don't get confused when you get different answers. It is exactly the same thing. This one, the denominator has not been rationalized. This one has been rationalized by multiplying by 1. You don't change the value of, of, of that problem if you multiply it by 1. Thank you. Thank you.